So this one's a fun one. Uh, it's obviously our zero day stuff, but we're looking at winning streaks and just how many how many winning and losing streaks you you can expect while trading some of these zero day strategies. So. Uh, zero days to expiration, which is our zero DT trades, have surged in popularity due to their potential for high returns with remarkably short time frames. Obviously, uh, these these moves day to day can be big. A couple hundred bucks can be a couple thousand bucks if you're just yoloing uh, options. It can also be zero, so you have to keep that in mind as well. I mean, these things move uh, significantly. Through, uh, yesterday, yesterday was a great example of that. If you put the trade on relatively early, like we talk about a little bit before. 9 uh, a.m. and you take it off before noon, good chances of a, of a winner uh, on that trade. The, the market really didn't do too much until near the end of the day. If you tried to do like our friend Glenn was talking about uh, yesterday, who came in from the trade desk and kept the trade on all day because you wanted to eke out the extra. It was Q. It was Q. Come on. You know, Quinn. Oh, Quentin, Quentin, right. Sorry, sorry. You know me, I'm bad with names. If it was, if you did like Quentin, let's blame Glenn too. Quentin and Glenn, even though you I think Glenn might be out in LA with me, I should be nice to him. Uh, well, it was it like Quentin and Glenn, whoever it was uh, from the trade desk who kept their trade on all the way through the day? It probably became a full loss. Yes. Um, we, we've shown multiple in multiple studies that. Managing positions, especially in the zero days, um, you know, it'll flatten out your PL distribution. So you'll have, you know, the the great thing about zero day stuff is that you can have these huge, you know, upside potentials, but it also goes to zero. And so when you're managing these trades at a conservative price target, a c conservative profit target, you really flatten out that distribution and you make it a, a, a much more sustainable game. And I think you'll see that here as well with the, the study that we, that we perform. So um, the sheer frequency of zero day opportunities allow traders to accumulate numerous trades swiftly. So doing these every day, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities at, at minimum five trades a week. I mean, that's far more than what uh, has ever been considered an active trader. That's one of my favorite stats. Um, that I mentioned at, at some of the live events is that the industry calls an active trader, and it, and this is like from like the the you know the the Schwabs and the TDs of the world. If you trade more than once a quarter, so basically you know if you rebound you know SPX and S and P five hundred rebalances every quarter. If you do more trades than that, that is an active trader. And now we're talking about zero day trading. You know, one a day. Um, so just to give you a perspective on on just how rare uh, real active traders are, like on this network. Um, it is funny what they consider an active trader. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's yeah. nothing. So consequently, traditional per trade statistics such as win uh, can we go yep, such as win loss ratios or average returns may fall short of capturing the intricacies of zero day trading as they often overlook the significant impacts of consecutive winning and losing streaks. So this is really what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna look at uh, the streaks winning and losing based on management or non-management of the trades. And I think this will be um, an important takeaway for everybody that's trading these uh, these strategies. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the next slide here, slide two. So the study, we're using two and a half years of data in the zero day SPX options collected every 10 minutes. Remember, these have only been around for a couple years and they started as uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then, or they, they started, they were originally weeklies and then they added Mondays, I think, or did they do Wednesdays first? Wednesdays first, but don't quote me on that. They, they did Wednesdays Monday. and then they added daily. So these, you know, as much as we talk about these, they've, they're very, very new. Um, yeah. and that's why you only have a couple years of data here. So the the we're looking at the daily results from selling a ten dollar wide iron fly at nine a.m. Central, uh, and that's plus or minus five minutes uh, from that time frame. So we're collecting the results and and seeing the streaks of winners and losers, and then analyzing them. We're looking at the duration of the streaks, and then the resulting magnitude of win, wins and losses. We're contrasting that the we're contrasting the closing of ten percent of the max pop profit against twenty five percent of the max profit against just leaving the trades on. So we're looking at two different profit exits as well as just like letting the trade run. And these are for iron flies, so these are very very 
tight, low probability trades on entry. You want to kind of manage these quickly, which is what we'll we'll look at in the data here. So all this, the- is, this is going to be very this is going to be very telling. This is going to be a good little study that you got going on here because they're they're doing basically everything we talked about and everything that we've kind of. If you were if you were to hone in on what we've been doing with zero days in a mechanical fashion, this would be it. Exactly. Um, and just another point here, all these trades are done at mid price and all the losers held through expiration. So you got to keep in mind we're done at the best possible price for us to look good. <laughs> no, no, no. Just kidding. Just kidding. You, you got to keep in mind with any back test, there is some slippage that gets lost here because, yeah. you know, sometimes in whippy markets, mid prices, bid ask spreads can widen out. A lot of times, you know, you have to go below the mid price to get filled or sometimes you get a, you know, price and fill improved above the mid price. So uh, you just got to keep that in mind as well, but it's yeah. small. Yes. So getting into slide three here. So we're looking at the winners closed at 10% of the max profit. Uh, we're looking at the distribution of the number of runs. We're talking about like the the uh, consecutive winning days and consecutive losing days. Uh, and then on the right side, we have the distribution of the runs by the, the magnitude. So we're looking at the, the profit potential and then the number of times that occurred. You can see that, you know, and – of course, this goes to the data set, too, of the last two years, which have been significantly more to the upside uh, than a 20-year data set where you have a little bit, um, you know, the, the run that we've had in the last two years has been very, very substantial. And that's why you see a lot of your winning, you know, you, a lot more winning days in a row than you have losing days in a row um, throughout that. So you have, you know, your 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 winning runs are are significantly longer than your losing runs. The key here is that you're, you know, managing your winners. You're managing at 10%. You could see your from like all of these uh, uh, runs, your mean profit is $500 and change here. Your mean losing run is $200 and change. And that's because you're, you're, you're managing these profit, these profits quickly. You're taking these positions off. What you're going to see is that you're, you're removing a lot of potentially losing trades because you're managing early on these positions. Sure. The, the, the trade was a, was a 10% is a relatively small profit, right? I mean, I, you know, when you're, uh, when you're doing, when you're doing these, I mean, I, I hope they did a twenty percent one too, but I would love to see the, the difference. Twenty five percent. You didn't listen on the other slide. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh. You, oh, I, I listened. I just didn't retain it. I can't close my ears like I can close my eyes. <laughs> so I did hear you. I just didn't retain it. Um, but this uh, with a short little time frame here, ten percent. Sometimes this happens in in under half an hour. I mean, like now again. You might not get filled at the 10% and it would become a full loser in the real world. So, you know, because it's the mid price on these SPX options, you got to take that with a little bit of a grain, grain of salt. So let's see what the, let's see what the, re results, the rest of the results are before I, I, I put my, my asterisk on this slide. Yes. So you're, you know, this is your um, conservative trade, right? Like this is the one where, you know, if you're trying to set it and forget it, I'd probably go this route. This is this is your relatively undercapitalized trader trying to make things happen in SPX, which is a huge, big product and typically out of the reach for a smaller account. But they're trying to grow it. Like, I mean, I yes. you know, I, I remember when I first started trading, I had five thousand dollars in my account and I was leveraged, you know, fifty fold. So, you know, I, 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 I get I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. So this is this is for that person. This is where you should be. For sure. But as always, you have to be able to withstand the runs that go against you. And you can see even here with a with a very, very tight management of 10 percent. You're still going to have many, many occurrences of yeah. two, three, four, even five days in a row where yeah. you're you're going to lose money on these trades. And so you 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 know it, it always goes back to size, and we keep talking about it. But you know you got to make sure that these positions are are small enough to deal deal with losing streaks. You're always going to have losing streaks throughout your career. You're 100 percent correct, son. 
Next slide here, we'll go and look at the 25% management. And you can see here, your the 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 distribution comes to be much more uh, even, right? So your winning runs are just under two days in a row. Your losing runs are the mean of them is just over two days in a row. So you have a little bit of, of it's basically 50, 50 in terms of like your distribution mm -hmm. of, of your runs here. You have a lot more upside skew in terms of the number of, of, of winning and, and profit potential that you have on these trades. Like you have a lot more upside uh, tail on the, on the, uh, to the upside in the market, just because we've had that upside move in the market. If we looked at an isolated a time where the market went down, like if we had two years where it kind of chopped and went down, the distribution would skew the right distribution mm -hmm. would skew to the downside. It just happens to be that the period that we've, that we have data on is, is an upside period in the market. So also keep that in mind, you know, like this can switch, if it's a not bull market, right? If it's a bear market or a choppy market, uh, yeah. this can switch. But you can see here that your your but the results can be the same, right? I mean, the 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 the, the how you get the profit it might might change, but the results could be the same. For sure, and and you see with the winning trades here, your results are for winners are you obviously get a a mean that is higher because you're you're managing for a higher profit potential mm -hmm. but the the amount that you're making above the 10% is is much lesser on a percentage basis than the increase in the losing runs and that comes because you have your winners are lesser right because you're only getting 2 days of winners versus three days of winners with the with the 10% and you're getting and that means that more of those those days that basically that one day is moving over to the loss side and so you're losing runs increase by about 50% because it's going from $200 ish losing run to about a $300 ish losing run whereas your winning run is going from $500 to just about $600 on a percentage basis you're increasing your winning runs by about 20% and you're increasing your losing runs by about 50%. Yeah. So you're you you you're widening out that P&L distribution and it's kind of skewing to the downside. So it's you, you obviously have up more upside profit potential because you're managing at a higher number, but your loss potential is widening by a greater amount and that's something that you should consider, you know, when you're looking at these two Man. So you're obviously putting yourself uh, managing winners a lot more in 10% than 25%, which makes completely, I mean, it's, it's, it's completely logical. Doesn't, uh, I don't think that's surprising. Hey, can you go back to that 10% slide for a minute? We got yeah. 585 on the winning runs and 298 on the losing runs. And it's just about the same 585 versus 502, 222 versus 298. So you don't really take that much more P&L risk, less less occurrences to, to being positive. Of course, go back to the. Well, to you're you're increasing your winning runs by you know ten to fifteen percent. I said twenty percent originally, mm -hmm. but it's more like ten to fifteen percent. And your losing runs in terms of the loss amount is increasing by like thirty five forty percent. So moving the the profit target to twenty five percent, it it doesn't. It's not like linear in terms of increase. You know, there you get more. Your your losses become bigger than your wins. Yep. Yep. The yep. the running winning amount. Yep. They're both the 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 point being that they're both good. You yes. know, like these are both good, but it depends on you know your risk tolerance and and how you like to trade. Like a lot of people want to trade and then be done with the trade, you know, early in the day and move on and not have to to worry about it. If that's your situation, you should probably lean towards the ten percent. If you're a little bit more, you know, you know, risk taking, you go to the twenty five percent. They're both good. It's just um, you know a, a different perspective from a. P and L variants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we're doing uh, just like leaving these and letting them go. You can see, obviously, you know, your losing runs are going to be much, much bigger. Your t it, anytime you're managing winners, you're increasing your your 
probabilities, right? So if it's a 50-50 shot on entry and you're managing at 10%, you might be taking that from a 50% win rate to a 70% win rate. It's it's always going to be that, that case because you're removing the tail. You're removing those those outlier moves and especially with options that that decay and you can only make so much on them as you get closer as you get more profit, the the potential amount that you can lose gets bigger because that profit is is realized and you're leaving that on the table. So you can see you know, you get a lot of a lot of 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 one day win winners, and then you have a lot of tail risk here. You have a lot of of five day losing runs where you know market moves and and you go from a full winner to a full loser. That's really what is skewing here is that you know your losing trades become much much bigger because you have so much more risk on the table because those winning trades turn into losing trades, and that's a big that's a bigger wider range. Sure. Sure. And, and, and look at these win runs under 500, uh, losing runs closer to 750, 800. Um, you can't just set them and forget it. That's the, uh, that's the takeaway here, which we've always talked about. Yes. Always got to be managing your positions and always got to be managing. some way. Yeah. And in zero days, you got to be even more aggressive with your management because, uh, everything is uh, it's a binary event which we talked yes. about yeah we gave you two potential managements here so yeah um, and both of them look very nice so mm -hmm. let's get to the takeaways here and then we'll get to the phone calls so by closing winners after they reach 10% of the max profit consecutive losers were largely avoided while long runs of winners made for good profits um we just saw that it was about um 3 days ish that you got in winning runs versus the two days in losing runs. So unmanaged ironflies had the opposite result, rarely having more than one win in a row and net being down a great deal. This is just because, you know, the 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 width of your or the the range of your PL on the loss side gets really, really wide because you're not taking the occurrences off the table. Very, um, very intuitive there. A 25% profit target results in very similar distribution for the length of winning and losing uh, runs, but with win streaks being more profitable than loss streaks were costly given overall positive results. So, um, Again, when you increase the profit potential, the losing the losses get bigger, and so your your swings get wider. Whether considering trade by trade or taking a longer view, the more we analyze zero day option selling, the more ways we find to appreciate rapid rapid profit taking, taking the risk off the table. This doesn't even account for what you can do with that capital elsewhere. I mean, you take the profit, now you got more money that you can deploy into something else. Maybe you put it into a, a 45 day trade or or do something else with with that money. That's that's also uh, a, a variable you can't really study, which is the opportunity. You can't factor cost. it in. If you're not subscribed, subscribe right here. And if you wanna meet me and the team in person at our next live event, hit the link at the top of the description.